What is up guys, so Blue has done it once again and this time we have a new budget smartphone. This one comes at only $50. Yes, the price is pretty shocking, but there is a catch to that price. This is Ben here with Android Authority and let's take a look at the all new Blue R1 HD. Now for only $50, you can pick up this phone that comes with 8GB of storage and 1GB of RAM. Or just add another $10 and you'll get the version that comes with 16GB of storage and 2GB of RAM. Now at first, it seems like the price is actually unbelievable, but there is some fine print on this one. The Blue R1 HD is exclusive for Amazon Prime members and it will feature offers and ads that are placed right on the lock screen which are unremovable. Yes, it is a bummer. You can get a version that does come without the ads and the non-Amazon Prime exclusive one, but there is another contingency that will jump up the price to $100 to $110, so it will become twice as expensive. Now moving a little back and taking a look at the design of the phone, it is actually also a surprise when you think at how much the device actually cost. The thickness of the phone measures at just under 9mm, coming in exactly at a thin profile of 8.7mm. When you turn it over, the R1 HD sports a plastic back cover with the camera protruding outward. The back cover is actually not slippery and actually does well in giving it more grip and an all around great handle experience. Around the phone, there is an aluminum frame, which also houses the volume rockers and the power button, which are also made up of the same material. Moving to the inside, the back is removable, which is always a plus for any phone. On the inside, you will find your two micro SIM card slots and a micro SD card slot for expandable storage for up to 64 gigs. The battery is also seen here, which is a 2500 milliamp battery, which unfortunately is not removable, but in my opinion, 2500 milliamps is a good amount, and to note, is usually the average we see in a smartphone nowadays. During my testing, the R1 HD did last me approximately 8 hours on a medium to heavy use, which included surfing the web and watching videos as well. During this testing, I did set the screen brightness to maximum and was streaming full screen video. And I still didn't have any trouble getting the R1 to last through a full day of use. The phone does not include any quick charging abilities, but it's actually really quick and can get fully charged in about 2 hours. Moving towards the front of the phone, the R1 HD has a 5 inch HD display with an on cell touch panel which is running 1280 by 720 pixels, resulting in a pixel density of 294 pixels per inch. Yes, that was a mouthful, but overall, just to sum it up, the content does appear sharp, the viewing angles are excellent, and the colors are decent, but obviously, since this is an IPS LCD, it won't be up to par to what an AMOLED display could bring forth. Protection was not scratched off, even though this is a budget phone, the phone does have cornering Gorilla Glass 3, which will give your smartphone an extra layer of protection against scratches, cracks, and breakage. Now you might be asking, Ben, this phone seems okay, what's so bad about it being an Amazon Prime exclusive? So the reason why this phone is an Amazon Prime exclusive is that alongside the display, as soon as you press the power button, you're greeted with an ad. Now since they know the same ad will bore you every time, they've decided that every time you do wake up the phone, you will be greeted with a different ad. And from there, you can just swipe up and go into the phone. So that's the only difference that is between the Amazon Prime and the non-Amazon Prime exclusive one. You're just gonna have to see an ad every time you unlock the phone. Moving on to the brain of the phone, the inside of the phone is powered with a 1.3 GHz core MediaTek 6735 ARM Cortex processor with a Mali T720. Now the one I'm testing out is a maxed out version which comes with 16 GB of internal memory and 2 GB of RAM. The other version which is also available is sporting 8 GB of internal memory coupled with 1 GB of RAM is $10 cheaper than this one. For a budget smartphone, I really didn't expect this, but the Blue R1 HD is actually running Android 6.0 Marshmallow right out of the box, which is impressive to see on a budget smartphone, considering that the specs are on the lower tier. The Blue R1 HD does tag alongside 4G LTE bands 2, 4, 7, and 17, and also has promised that the 4G LTE band 12 will be available via an over-the-air update. Moving back a little bit, the phone doesn't have much extra features and is actually a nearly stock version of Android with an app drawer that flows vertically. And all the other features give it a very stock look and feel as well. Moving towards the bottom of the screen, you will see that there are three main functions including a back, home, and a recent apps function. In addition to everything, Google Now is also available with just a press of a button. Now on a day-to-day -day basis, I think everything together actually runs very well, and I haven't noticed any serious lags that have occurred. Launching apps doesn't take much time, and you can jump easily from app to app without any lag. Gaming is also fairly fluid as well, and it does a good job in not dropping any frames. I did open Geekbench to see how it compares to the others, and it gave me a single core score of around 500 and a multi-core score of around 1600. So overall, you have to keep bringing back the price. For $50, there's not much you can complain about since it is spitting out some decent reports and it seems like that it can be used on a daily basis for an average smartphone user who doesn't desire too much performance but just enough to be average and get through the day.
Moving on to the camera of this budget phone, the camera can be a hit or miss sometimes. The front of the phone features a 5 megapixel wide angle front facing camera with an LED flash. The picture quality is decent and some problems that will occur is the overexposure and some noise. The rear facing camera features an 8 megapixel autofocus camera sensor with an f2.0 aperture and a 4p lens. A 4p lens means that it has 4 lenses made out of plastic which gives it more exact focusing and better correct for distortions. For the rear facing camera there are some extra modes built in so you can shoot like a panoramic picture if you would want to. The picture quality is decent as seen here for a budget smartphone but definitely nothing to be wowed over. You will get some overexposed images and a bit of noise in the overall picture but with the correct lighting you can can get some decent results as I tried here at the park. Video can be recorded in HD up to 1080p at 30 frames per second but there are not any extra features and it seems kind of grainy at times just like the picture quality. Moving right under the camera is where the speaker is housed. Now just like the last blue phone we reviewed, the speaker is also at the back which is not an ideal location since most of the time either your finger or your palm will be placed in this area. In terms of sound quality, it is decent and you can crank up the volume all the way up to the max without any distortion. The heavy bass is not there, but it will still be able to deliver decent sound with good highs and good lows. It obviously could have been better with the speaker located somewhere other than the back. So yeah, even though the specs on this phone is not something to be going crazy about, this phone can be bought for just $50. Now, yes, it does have some ad shuffling, performance isn't up to par to other big phones, it still does everything that a phone is supposed to do. And it comes in at a great price for anyone that is on a tight budget. But yeah, let me know what you think about the phone. Write it down in the comment section below. What version would y'all get? Would y'all get the 8GB version, the 16GB version? What version would y'all get? The Amazon Prime version? And also check out AndroidAuthority.com for the full in-depth review on this phone. The links will be in the description below. And stay tuned and subscribe because we are your source for all things Android. Later.